Hey y'all, I'm back with part two of Dysfunction and Denial Leads to Destruction. So we were talking about how, you know, motherfuckers want to come back in your life after all this confusion. And they don't know the situation. They don't know the program. They don't know the full details of what's going on. They want to correct you. On your life and how to handle you and your children and, and your situation you might be struggling with. And, and they ain't been around, been absent, been ghosts, sleep. And, and the, the main thing I really want to point out there is that, you know, the denial of the dysfunction. That's, that's what really irritates me. You know, and the two sided bullshit that comes along with it. The do as I say, not as I do type shit. Y'all, I'm sure y'all old school know what I'm talking about. If you're 30 and older, you kind of feel me. So, um, yeah. You know, the, the, the problem that I've been dealing with in my personal experience with my so-called family but that's what I've been going through, y'all. And <clears throat> I just wanted to help reach out to those who might have experienced this or who are experiencing this same or similar thing to kind of give you a heads up on how to release yourself and your children, if, if you have any, from this bind and this curse of... A dysfunctional family structure because it's very time consuming it's very stressful and very 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 frustrating and it could push you to a point where you feel like <clears throat> excuse me you want to really fuck somebody up especially the motherfuckers meddling and they don't really have no place to be meddling in your shit and you holding it down pretty good and they just can't seem to overcome their own personal misery or their own personal hang ups and they want to continue to project that on you and make it as difficult for you to succeed and overcome and survive because they miserable motherfuckers themselves and I know my situation is no more special than the next one. And I know it's rampant out there. It's many thousand million people going through this shit. But I'm, I'm going to be bold enough to speak out on it and share my little personal issues with you. So hopefully I touch somebody and I can help them navigate through this bullshit of dysfunction and denial. So they don't have to live through the destruction and devastation of drama that I have over the past 30 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and I consider myself a pretty strong individual. Pretty intelligent. Pretty sharp. And, and I try to be rational more so than emotional. I try real hard. Sometimes, you know, the flesh get the best of me. And, you know, I end up shredding a motherfucker. But it's best to try to stay rational with these types of individuals, especially family. Because you don't want to totally have to cut a motherfucker off, especially your blood. But if you have to, you must do it. And you must do it now, immediately, forthwith. Because just like them, you deserve peace of mind. You deserve to make your own decisions without being uh, 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 interrogated and ridiculed and harassed and belittled on how you choose to parent your children, how you choose to wear your clothes, who you choose to pick as a partner, your friends, or, or, or whatever. It's just too much. Once a person is pretty much grown and set in their ways 
it's time for other motherfuckers to fall back and just be there for a safety net when you need a little extra push. That's what parents are supposed to do. Wean their children out of the nest so they can spread their own wings and fly. Not continue to clip them. Once they see them soaring, they want to play pool, skeet, shoot. And blast your ass out the sky just because they some miserable motherfucker themselves. And they don't know what to do because they done give up their whole spirit and life and light source to a motherfucker who's zapping them for their energy. And all they have to control is their children. So they don't want to let their children go because they don't have nothing to control after that. And they don't have nothing that gives them meaning. And they don't have their own meaning and their own definition of themselves. That's some dysfunctional shit. Some twisted, demented, demonic shit, ain't it? I've been going through this for a long time. And after I had children, the shit got worse. And um, it's, it's really difficult, <clears throat> excuse me, because especially if you're a single parent, you know, you have limited resources sometimes. It gets a little hard. You really don't know who to trust. You, you you need help while you're working. You need to have daycare. All you really have is your parents or your mom or whatever to watch over your babies while you try to make a living and get out there and grind and hustle and do what you got to do and, and keep it legit, you know, and all of that. It's difficult. It's very hard. And you find yourself with this narcissistic, twisted motherfucker who... They say they want to help you, but each time they do decide that they're going to give you their assistance or support in, in a pinch, they end up making the shit worse than what it was if you had just kept their ass out of it. Does that make sense? So, the first thing is identifying what the dysfunction is. In my case... It's narcissistic personality disorder. And narcissists always need their ego fed. And they always need something to control, something to do, something to distract them from facing themselves and all the things about themselves that they don't like. They have no sense of self identity. They have identified themselves with other things. To make them feel important, superior. So, the first thing to do is identify the disorder. The second thing is distance yourself and your children from it as much as possible without being disrespectful. And without being trying not to get too ugly and creating too much unnecessary stress and drama that you really don't need in your life. Also, don't argue with them. Don't get into a battle of wills and wit like I did. That's really a big no-no. You know what you're doing. You know how you're doing it. You know how you've established your lifestyle. And they're going to want to know what you're doing, when you're doing, where you're going, how you're going. You know, don't argue with them. Pretty much walk away. Let let it be is what it is. And it's hard. Because sometimes when it's your parent or sibling who you feel close to. You don't want to lose them. You need them in good times and bad times. You want to celebrate with them. You want to share exciting news. You want, you know, some comfort from them when you're going through bad times. You know, you don't want to cut them off. You don't want to just X them totally out of your life. You know, that's a hard thing to do. But you know what? Sometimes it's necessary. Because they're toxic. And they don't need to be in your every moment, know every moment, every waking minute of all your life's activities. They, they don't need to know that shit. Some things have boundaries and they just don't need to know. It's none of their fucking business. And if you see your boundaries being crossed like that, push them back. Pull back. Keep it to yourself. And find someone else you can confide in or confide in yourself. 
You can talk to me. You can inbox me. Holla at me. I know when to fall back and when not to. So, but, I, you know, I'm just really trying to help those out there who have experienced this and who understand and feel where I'm coming from because it can be very confusing, very frustrating, and it, it, it just, it's no words sometimes you can just, dis- describe used to describe the feeling of of just being trapped and stuffed in a box and it's like I, am i the only motherfucker to see this it's got to be somebody else going through this shit somewhere to understand what i'm going through just so they can relate and they don't feel like 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 they're losing it um another thing to do is make sure you set the boundaries and you keep the boundaries. Don't change your mind and sway and go back and forth across the fence. If you say this is what it is, what it is, put your foot down and keep it down. Don't keep flip-flopping back and forth, letting them manipulate you with guilt trips and I love you and I miss you and all that because that's just another way to get back in your good graces so they can get all in your business and fuck you up and turn on you and stab you in your back. So, um, those are just some things to keep in mind when you're dealing with dysfunction and denial. Because it's, it's, it's some serious shit, y'all. You know, and when our kids are exposed to that, they're confused. And they, they're, they're torn based on their loyalty to you as their parent and their loyalty to that other family member that might be a sibling or a grandparent or, you know, someone close to you, who you have a, you know, reciprocatory relationship with, you know, for me, it was my mom, you know, and she had a tug of war with me over my kids and who can mother them better and all of this because all of us were grown, her, she was in an empty nest with my father and they're codependent and they pretty much can't stand each other by now, after all these years, they sick of each other. And they don't have, they can't, can, you know, they don't have anything to control. And because they don't have anything in common, what better? Well, we'll, we'll fuck with the grandkids. We'll fuck with our daughter, turn her life upside down so we can have our grandkids all to ourselves. That's basically what's going on. And then they use triangulation techniques and tactics to fuck you up. You know, they'll tell one sibling one thing, turn around and tell you something else, and then the other sibling something totally different. And then when y'all get together and compare notes, you about to go each at each other's throat because this one motherfucker in the middle done started all this unnecessary drama to make themselves feel superior. And then they come in and then they try to referee the shit that they started. Some crazy shit. Triangulation, that's real fucked up. Sibling rivalry and all that bullshit. So just, you know, if you find yourself in this situation, take a step back and kind of observe and see what's going on. And then get out of it as much as, as quick as you can. Push yourself away from that situation as fast as you can. Because the shit that I've just went through this past week, y'all, it, it, I could write a book. I could write a book and I, I think I will. Write a book about this crazy, demented, twisted shit. And the denial, the denial will go make you pull your hair out. Make you pull your fucking hair out with how they deny. I didn't do that. I didn't tell your brother that about you. I don't talk about you behind your back. Knowing that the only source, the only person you told the shit to was this one person. They the only one that knows. And now it's all through the family. And it's not even the story that you initially shared. That's why I say, keep it to yourself. Don't trust them. They can't be trusted. They have no empathy. They have no sense of right and wrong. They feel they're above morality. And that fucks a family up. And like I said, when the little babies are exposed to this and they grow up into forming their own mind and their own personalities and their own way of thinking, it's it's a real it's a real it's a real st- tr- strategic chess game, y'all, to keep them on the right track, 
keep their mind focused, keep them educated, keep them well-rounded, and keep them um, functional, healthy. Keep them from being dysfunctional. It's real crazy. It's scary. And you have to tread lightly and be very careful and make sure you shield your children from this bullshit. And I'm not going over time, so I might have to come back at you with a part three. Some deep shit. Save our babies, y'all.